Okay, did you, did you mention this was the uh, pressure sensor? Yep. And there's an accelerometer here yep. too? So why do we have a pressure sensor, an accelerometer, and GPS all on one board? Well, GPS is really wonderful for knowing the latitude and longitude of the rocket, um, but GPS is somewhat challenged for determining altitude. Um, it does very well if you aren't moving really fast in elevation, but of course rockets tend to go really fast when they launch. And so uh, having the barometric pressure sensor allows us to get a more precise indication of the altitude that the rocket is actually at in any given moment, um, and to give us an easier way, a faster way to detect when the rocket reaches apogee. The accelerometer, uh, we initially put that on the board because my partner are also interested in research mm -hmm. motor development, and this does allow you to collect enough data to be able to uh, characterize the performance of a research motor and determine what its actual you know, performance is. But it turns out it's also really handy because <coughs> it means that if you're gonna fly faster than speed of sound, we don't have any configuration required for mock delay settings or anything like that. Because using the accelerometer, we can tell when the rocket's moving really fast. Mm -hmm. And therefore, our barrow sensor won't be fooled into accidentally deploying the parachutes earlier or okay. something like that because of the pressure transitions that occur as you go through the mock transitions. Okay, so now we got this great board right. and we're gonna mount it in a rocket. Um, how are we gonna talk to it and how are we gonna get data off of it? Okay, um, so normally when you're on the bench or at the field and you're doing configuration of the board and charging the batteries and all, you'd use a USB cable from a notebook computer, a desktop computer plugged into the board. Uh, as we've already mentioned, that would allow you to charge the battery. Um, it also, when this board is plugged into a computer, it comes up looking like a normal serial port and, you know, like a modem or something like mm -hmm. that. And so any terminal program on the, your computer can be used to go in and talk to the little menu structure that's built into this board to do things like set the radio call sign to pick the uh, altitude at which you'd like the main chute to deploy. If you're flying more than one altimeter, you can set a delay for the apogee charge. So you can have one that deploys right at apogee and one that deploys you know, a few seconds after apogee so you're not firing multiple charges in the airframe at the same time. Um, and there's some other calibration things that you can do if you want to, but normally uh, as they come from the factory, they're adequately programmed that you can set the radio frequency channel that you want to use, set the uh, call sign for the board, and just go fly it. Okay. Um, so you do need to know a little bit of terminal programming to operate this? Yes, there are no switches or jumpers or anything on this board. It's entirely configured using the computer interface and a terminal is, emulation Is there program. plans for to make the computer interface kind of menu driven so that somebody yes. that doesn't, is not technically you know, literate be able to, to use it? Yeah, absolutely. My partner Keith and I are both Linux guys. And so our initial um, software was all written for the Linux operating system. Mm -hmm and that's what I'm still using. Um, but we have spent some time recently rewriting all that. I should say Keith has spent some time okay. rewriting that. <coughs> uh, I'm mostly the hardware guy, he's mostly the software guy, but that all gets blurred at the boundaries. Um, and the new software base uh, is intended to work equivalently on Linux, on Macintosh, and on Windows. Um, and the new software, we are moving more of the functionality into being menu picks and the, okay. the user interface. So over time, this gets easier. It gets right, better and better. <laughs> right now, you need a terminal program for sure to, to be able to configure okay. this. Now, the neat thing, though, is as I mentioned, this is a bi-directional radio interface. And what that means is that after you've mounted this in your rocket and buttoned the whole thing up, you can put the rocket down on the ground or on a stand, turn your electronics on. So and then, remotely? Well, you, can t you have to turn the power on, okay. right? But then once you've turned the power on, you can actually use the radio link to configure this board. You can use the radio link to extract data. It's really nice after you've flown a rocket mm -hmm. to be able to bring it back, turn the electronics on again, and get all the flight data out without having to physically tear the rocket apart to get to the board inside the eBay. That's really cool. Uh, the other thing that's very neat is that we sort of have two operating modes. If you turn the board on with the nose up, um, because of the accelerometer, we can detect that the nose is up. And we assume that that means that you're on a, have a rocket on a rod or a rail and you're ready to fly. And so it goes into what we call pad mode, where it's trying to detect a launch. Um, and at that point, it's transmitting data over the radio. It's basically not listening. <coughs> and it's focused all of its attention on making sure that we detect the launch and do the flight state machine properly. 
However, if you turn the board on when it's horizontal or nose down, it comes up in a mode that we call idle mode, where all of the ejection charges are completely safe. Mm -hmm. And so um, what's neat about this is you can actually do uh, ejection deployment testing on the ground without having to do the things we've had to do in the past of you know, running some extra wires in through the static port to get to the charges or, or something like that. You can just load your rocket up like it's ready for flight, sit it down out in the grass somewhere safe on blankets, whatever you normally do, uh, turn it on in idle mode, then you can come in over the radio link and command it to fire the ejection charges to do testing. Uh -huh. Another neat thing you can do is you can turn the electronics on while the rocket's horizontal. Then, uh, particularly if you have a large project, you can load it on the rail, turn the rocket vertical, and then without having to climb up on a ladder or up on the tower and monkey around with a screwdriver trying to turn switches, you can, over the radio link, come in and tell it to recycle itself and go from the idle mode into the pad mode, uh -huh. ready for flight. So we think physically that that's a lot of times safer because then you don't have people standing on the top of step ladders and other things like that. Okay. So there's a lot of neat stuff that, that happens as a consequence of having the radio link and having the GPS on the board. And the fact that we were able to, to fit all of this on a board that's about the same size as a lot of you know, simpler dual deploy altimeters, yeah. we think makes this you know, a fairly exciting thing to fly. Okay, and then once it's in the air, it's sending data back down to the ground. How do, you, how do you get that data back? Well, uh, when you're, uh, let me grab this and I'll show you. What we normally have is some kind of an antenna. This is a commercial three element Yagi. So this will be something that you have to get separately. Yep, okay. exactly. Uh, this is not part of the kit because uh, there are plans out on the internet uh, for antennas that you could build. Um, if you're not flying very high, you can even use a simple just wire whip antenna on this board and that would be sufficient. I flew lots of our test flights with this just taped to the top of the back of my Suburban with a wire whip and uh, that works surprisingly well. But uh, nowadays what we tend to use is use one of these uh, Yagi antennas. As you can see, this is the same um, ground piece. We call this as a teledongle. It's you know, the USB to, to RF interface. We mount that right here at the feed point of the antenna and then using the USB cable, we plug that into a laptop. Mm -hmm. We run the software on the laptop and then during flight, we can point this antenna in the general direction where the rocket is and we get good data all the way through the flight. Okay, and uh, we have some data here on the computer. 